Hello ladies and gentlemen, it's Mike here at Game From Scratch and today we are talking about one that's been around for a long time. I believe it goes back to about 2001, what with the first major release being I think around 2005. And that thing we are talking about today is Ogre 3D. Now this one is a framework, it, it's a renderer technically, but it does much more than that and it has been at the basis of several successful commercial games as we will see in a few minutes. And they uh, just released Ogre 2.1 Balder. Now um, first we're going to jump in, take a look at what's new in that release. Then we're going to go over a bit of uh, what makes Ogre special and look at some of the games that were created with it. So here we are, we're at ogre3d.org. And what we're specifically interested in is this part right here, the Boulder release. Now, again, this is a lower level uh, framework, just something to be aware of. So this is something like there's no editor there. This is something very code centric in its approach. It's the kind of thing you build your tooling on top of. In fact, uh, Ogre was the underlying. Um, framework used to demonstrate game engine development in the uh, book uh, Game Engine Architecture, I believe it was called. Great book, by the way. Uh, but here we can see Ogre 2.1 Boulder was released. They don't do a lot of releases, so this is a pretty significant uh, thing that happened. And we're looking at the key new things right here. So the, in the uh, 2.1 release, the major new features are the HLMS, so the high-level material system to generate shaders automatically. This replaces RTSS and manual shader creation. Now, it's a little misleading calling it high-level because you actually have more low level access than you ever did before but it is the shader system used in the ogre um, framework and it's really quite powerful and extremely complex it would be an own its own video at this point in time if i wanted to cover it but that is what they've shifted to one of the big things about using the high level material system is you can have the shaders kind of being tweaked or handled by uh, artists that don't have to get into it thus the word high level uh, but you've got a lot of low level access as a coder you can hook in and integrate it with your c++ code there is a ton of features of functionality click that link to find out more although technically that link is actually broken you got to edit it slightly but hopefully it's fixed by the time you see this uh, we got um, PBS or physically based shading we got a new compositor, more flexible, um, faster and powerful. The compositor allows you to do basically post-processing effects in uh, your Ogre scene when you're rendering stuff. Uh, we refactored Ogre 1.x to increase performance by several factors. So they've done using caching-friendly uh, techniques, data-oriented design, uh, SIMD instruction, ADSDO, uh, approaching zero driver overhead, auto instancing, and multi-threading. So basically that's a nice way of saying it's been made faster. Uh, and then we've got... Uh, Vista, uh, Windows 7, Windows 8, Windows 10 support, Mac OS via Metal and OpenGL, iOS via Metal, Linux via OpenGL. It's cool to see iOS there because I think this is actually one of the weaknesses of Ogre historically. And then many new features including area lights, parallel, um, parallax, cor uh, corrected cube maps, forward clustered lights, HDR, exponential shadow maps, and much more. So that's what's new in the uh, 2.1 Balder release. Uh, I don't think anyone is going to say no to better performance, uh, a nicer, newer faster material system or a new compositor so that's some really nice stuff in this particular release if you are already using ogre now if you are not using ogre you may be wondering why would i want to use ogre and that's what we were going to cover next so here we've got some of the features and highlights of it as i mentioned early on ogre is not technically a game engine. Uh, because it doesn't provide everything you need. There's a scene graph in there, and there's a renderer in there. There's, I think, some um, you know modular code for handling file loading and input and that kind of stuff, but you don't have uh, networking libraries. You don't have sound libraries. You don't have physics. The kind of stuff that you would expect to create a game aren't there out of the box. Now, a lot of times they are there as all the modules, but keep in mind, this is a renderer and not technically an engine. Uh, it's C++ based. It's open sourced. Uh, it's clean. It's very production ready. You've got Direct3D, 9, 11, Open GL, WebGL, and then now because of the new release, you also have Metal um, support in there. I, I think someone's going to ask about Vulkan. I do not believe Vulkan is a thing as of yet. Uh, again, we've got the material and shader supports, including that new high-level system here, ability to load textures in a number of different formats, uh, multiple material LOD system. Uh, we'll get into the meshes stuff. So again, this is designed more about uh, rendering mesh data than it is about you know being an importer and that kind of stuff. But there are tools available out there as well. You got full-on animation features there. Uh, things for handling. And once again, I mentioned they, there is a scene graph in there. So there is a way of storing your game data and several plugins that illustrate different things such as BSP or Octree support. But you're not really tied to the scene graph itself. This is more of a renderer, but there are scene graphs provided. So if you want to get started creating a game, every game has some kind of a scene graph, even if it's just an array of entities that are uh, represented by you know your level or your world. Uh, there are... Um, 
implementations out there, but it's not forcing you to any particular approach. What makes this nice about Ogre then is Ogre is a nice framework for building on top of, which again is why it's kind of featured in a game engine development book. And then we get into the special effects systems. You got things, once again, you got that compositor system that was just updated in the uh, Boulder release. Uh, particle system support, support for skybox, skyplane, skydomes, uh, billboarding, ribbon trails, transparent objects, and then various different other features. Again, a lot of it is via plugins. Plugin architecture allows a lot of people to implement, you know, things that aren't necessarily core to Ogre, but are needed for making any kind of a game, you know, using a framework of any kind. So um, that's kind of Ogre in a nutshell. It should also be, of course, pointed out, in addition to being uh, free and cross-platform, Ogre is also uh, open source under the very liberal MIT license. So if you want to check that out, I will link to the uh, GitHub repository as well, which interestingly enough, and I don't really understand this, but if you go on the Ogre webpage, uh, there's no links to the, the repository which strikes me as a very strange design decision. Uh, so anyways, I will link to the repository here. So if you want to check it out, it is uh, obviously it's a C++ based project. The development is very active. Um, and again, this has been going on for a very long time. So this guy has been around for years and years and years, and we'll probably be around for years and years more. Now, if you're wondering at this point in time, okay, why should I pay any attention to Ogre in this world where we are absolutely flooded with game engines and technologies and choices and options? And probably the biggest argument in favor of Ogre, especially when you compare it to something like say, um, the Godot engine or uh, a few other options out there like that. Well, this is the reason. Ogre is very, very well proven in industry. It's been used to make a number of different games for a number of different platforms. We're here at the showcase page and you can see some of the key games that have been created using Ogre. We have Hob, uh, we have Exmorph Defense, we have uh, Rings of Rod, Stunt Rally, um, Battle Zones, uh, Rebel Galaxy, and then of course the two big ones that are known is uh, Torchlight 1 and 2. Uh, so really, it is a very um, proven game engine. It has been used to make really beautiful looking performant games that run on many different platforms and the Torchlight series have sold millions of copies. So um, that is a big strength in, in the favor of Ogre. On top of that, it's being used in a lot of cases for things like uh, simulation systems or you know when you're in... Um, at a display that has a wall of displays with a control system behind it. Ogre is often that thing. Um, so that is definitely an area where Ogre, it, it absolutely shines, is there is a ton of, you know, proven body of work out there that shows Ogre can do potentially what you need it to do. Now, we're not talking anywhere near the level of, um, you know, the Unreal Engine or Unity a number of games shipped or even maybe CryEngine level of games shipped. But um, when you have titles like this where people can go, oh, Hob was used, created this, or Touchlight 1 or 2 were created using this. And then you look at those games, you go, okay, if I can do that with if they can do that with this, I can do what I need with it. So ship titles is a huge deal for engines, and that's one of those things that really shines for Ogre. So Ogre, once again, Ogre is not, absolutely is not a game engine. It is a renderer and a plugin system and an ecosystem of things that basically turn it into a game engine, but it is not technically a game engine. So that is it. Ogre 2.1 Boulder was released. Some nice new features in this release, of course. Um, let me know what you think of Ogre, what you think of frameworks in general versus the whole you know, a uh, big, fat, full-featured game engine versus something more svelte or, you know, focused or code-focused like something with Ogre. Uh, have you used it in the past? What do you think of it? Let me know all these things in the comments down below, and I will talk to you all later. Goodbye.